Hi, welcome to Dog 10. This is our dog cast where we're going to talk for 10 minutes about all things dogs, especially training. I'm Kara. I am an author and advocate for homeless dogs. And I'm Crystal Dunn. I'm a longtime dog trainer and podcaster for Farfetched. So today to start us <laughs> off, we're going to have Crystal address an issue that is probably a problem for lots of people. Um, and that is greeting people at the door, or in my case, having your dogs freak out anytime anyone comes anywhere near the door. So Crystal, tell us, what do we do? How do we handle this? Yeah. So I got a couple of really great questions from people. Um, when I shared that we'd be doing this, this little mini, mini dog cast. So, um, this is a really common challenge that, that obviously people go through all the time. And, um, and it's luckily not too complicated to address. It's just a bit of a process. So if you have a dog that barks at the door a lot, and you have a hard time getting them quiet down. And in these days when we're working from Zoom in our offices and stuff, that can be a big issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a couple of little things. At first, um, know that barking is an innate behavior for dogs, which means they just do it very naturally. So it's something that we have to treat very proactively and patiently and with lots of practice, the three Ps, right? Um, because innate behaviors are harder to change in a dog than something that we've accidentally taught them and rewarded them for or something like that. This just comes naturally. The other caveat is that um, it is not natural for a dog to be mute when somebody approaches their territory, their home or something. So a little bit of barking is pretty normal. Uh, obviously excessive barking is problematic, um, but that little bit uh, to let you know that they're there is often something we want in our dogs too. So it's important before you go into this process to be mindful about what behavior you actually want from your dog and how you're going to teach it. So my favorite place or my, my favorite method to treat this behavior is to replace it with one you want instead. So any replace, any behavior you don't like, what do you want instead? That's the key, the key question. Um, for barking at the door, overexcitability at the doorbell, I like to teach uh, a replacement behavior like going to get a toy. But um, it's not asking the impossible. Like a lot of times we'll teach them to go to a bed or something, which is totally an option too. But getting a toy is a little bit more natural for a dog and it busies their mouth. It's hard to bark when you have a toy in your mouth. So if you have a dog that is prone to playing with toys, like that kind of activity, it's also pretty easy to teach. It's something that comes really naturally to them so that you can, you can actually teach the trick, go get your toy anytime somebody knocks on the door, anytime anybody rings the doorbell and you are replacing one innate behavior with another, maybe less innate for the circumstances, but still pretty natural. Good fit. So one of the mistakes that people make when their dog is barking at the door is they wait for the event to happen in order to treat it. So they're treating the issue in the moment. At that point, the dog is already at a level 10. They're over threshold. They're not really in a listening state of mind. They're not really ready to learn anything new. And we end up just yelling at the dog and uh, it makes matters worse because we're just adding tension. We could even be damaging some of their sociability, right? Um, so instead of treating it in the moment, try a proactive approach. Decide what you want instead of barking and teach that trick first, right? So instead of uh, no doorbell, no knocking or anything like that in this first part, you're just teaching the trick. If I needed my dog to go get a toy, I want them to know how to go get a toy first. And we teach that, we re reward that on repeat and get that nice and solid, right? Before we add in the door. The next, next step is to start with a very low level stimulus that's very similar to a door, like knocking on a table, knocking on the wall, or even like a little app on your phone that plays a doorbell noise, if you have a doorbell. Mm -hmm. uh, those ring doorbells are really common now. So, you know, it really kind of helps to uh, have that little app on your phone or something that can duplicate that noise. If you find it's too overstimulating for your dog, try something less stimulating, okay? So it's really important to meet them where they're at. Don't try to over teach it, don't try to over train it. Um, and once you kind of have that down, you can, you can ring that bell on your phone or you can knock on that table and then give that cue, go get your toy. 
and do that on repeat until your dog can be very successful and starts to change or tr- starts to link those two events together, right? I hear this sound, so I go do this thing, right? Um, and once you've kind of got that on repeat and it's consistent, then you're ready to add in the actual door. But again, we're not going to just jump right in. We're not going to just open the door up because somebody's there and expect our dog to be successful. So it helps to have somebody that will help play along with you. Knock on the door, tell your dog to go get their toy and repeat and repeat and repeat until the dog is successful and consistent. So yeah, uh, after that, once your dog is really good and you can have a person at your door and knocking on it or ringing your doorbell, um, then you're ready to start opening the door and adding those next layers of stimulus to the situation. Um, and sometimes that person gets to walk right in and sometimes they just have to stand there and have the door shut in their face a couple of times <laughs> before the dog <laughs> is successful. So that's usually the routine that I like to go through to desensitize dogs, um, to visitors. Um, and it's really cool because it desensitizes them to the stimulus as well. So the doorbell ringing or a knock at the door isn't quite as exciting because it happens a lot when you're training it, you're doing this intensely for usually a couple of weeks at the very least. Um, it's a, one of those behaviors that could easily take a couple of months for your dog to get good at it. Even if you're consistent, especially if you have a really impulsive or energetic dog. Um, but, uh, but it does work. I've trained an entire house of hound dogs to do it. So if that's <laughs> possible, then, you know, uh, anybody can pretty much do it. Meanwhile, because like, we live in town now, which is a new experience and people yeah. pop up on our porch or knock on the door. We're going to have trick or treaters for the very first time. Um, and so we have a long, you know, it's going to take some time. And I've got three dogs to get through this whole, like, we don't yeah. Someone's at the door. So any, any like tricks for like, meanwhile, and also any tricks for making the cat not cry. <laughs> he's just adding, he's adding charisma to the whole experience of watching this. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Um, it's a good question. So in the meantime, have a plan B. Um, my go-to is separating the dog. As soon as the, the door bell rings or something, I like to have a leash handy so I can manage the dog in the process, or I can put the dog in another room. If they're kennel trained, that's a good option. If you know somebody's going to come over, go ahead and kennel them preemptively, give them something to work on, like a Kong or something. And that way you can kind of get through the process. Like that's a, your band-aid while you're training the desired behavior. Um, a, a quiet cue can also be helpful. <clears throat> so you can, you can use like hush or shush, you know, Uh, Those are good because they have that noise in them and it's kind of distinctive. It stands out. Um, Oftentimes the dog will get going, even if they are in a kennel on the other side of the door and it's hard to kind of get a word in edgewise. And that's also when you can kind of start to use interrupter sounds. So if you clap once or twice really loud, that's like an interrupter noise. It's not meant to address the issue though. It's meant to break the moment so that you can then insert something like a hush or shh. And it's really important for you to then bring your tone way back down so that you're not matching your dog's intensity (laughs) or adding layers to it, which is another common mistake we make, right? Like we bark back at the dog and then we wonder why everybody's barking. Um, In training, it's really common to lure and stuff, but mirroring is actually becoming a lot more commonplace and practice these days because we've learned that they're actually pretty good at mimicking us. So when you're teaching a quiet cue, you can use that to your advantage and start with a shh, like you're telling a secret or a hush. And, uh, and my dogs will often kind of look at me like, what are we talking about? And then you kind of get that, <laughs> kind of get that energy back, which is great because you don't want to amp it up, right? You want to bring it down. Um, yep. And it's also important to have treats by the door for, for teaching a quiet cue as well. And you can teach that proactively, proactively as well with your doorbell app, with your knocking. It's just that noise and then having treats ready and trying to get in there with your cue and capturing that moment of silence so that you can then reinforce it with food and over and over. Awesome. Awesome tips. Super helpful. So Thanks. if you all have other questions that you would like Crystal to address, it would be Crystal, not me, because I'm learning too. Um, please either put them in the comments or email or me or Crystal, and we will we will bring them up as the as we go through this on the next yes. dog 10. 
You can yeah. email me at farfetchedpod at gmail.com to submit questions as well, or um, on any of the socials at farfetchedpod. That's a good spot right. to submit questions. And if you need a cat, here's my current foster. <laughs> you can email me at who will let the dogs out at gmail.com and I will get back to you about the cat or other questions. And join Kara watching. on Dogs and Books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get That's better okay. at we'll this. this natural it's looking yeah, good we'll get better at this we will and hopefully this cat won't be here helping <laughs> next, <laughs> next one of you. it is a dog cast he's really <laughs> cute Poe. i like yeah. her he's cute and <laughs> loud <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right take care awesome see you later <laughs> <laughs>